Hi there guys, my name is Janka. I'm the lead game designer and writer for Fertagen. And um, I'm just going to take you quickly through how our content creator works. Now, just a quick uh, disclaimer, I'm recording this at the office, so if you hear any weird sounds, just my apologies. And also, just note that there will be spoilers. So if you're interested in keeping the mystery of the game, just, uh, just be aware of that. Just a quick apology. Uh, every once in a while my voice might cut out a bit because I'm just using a standard headset to record this. Uh, unfortunately, we just wanted to quickly get something out to help you with, uh, with the content creator and uh, understanding how it works. And we don't have any proper hardware to record this with, so just uh, our apologies for that. Now, first off, the documentation and uh, resources for uh, Patagon, you can find that if you go to our Steam store page. Go to the community hub, discussions, and then it's been there for Tachan Content Creator. Uh, you can read this just for your own information, uh, and then if you go to this link over here, it'll take you to a drive that contains both the uh, Tachan Content Creator guide, which is the documentation that I'll be taking you through, and uh, all of our story events. So we've made all of our story events available for you to use in any way you see fit um, within uh, Fetachen to create your own stories or even if you want to translate our current stories into the language of your choice. We've also made available the Haunt of the Dark mod which we've created. Right, with that being said, to find your Fetachen content creator you'll start with, you start in your games view, you go to library, tools, tools, You'll find your Fatahan Content Creator tool over here. You can also search for it in the bar above. Right click on this and you can install game. And so once it's uh, finished downloading, you can right click play game to start the tool or you can create a desktop shortcut for later use. Now first off, just a couple of comments and disclaimers on the tool. Um, it's, at Design Aims, we really want to improve this tool to, to a point where it meets all your needs in developing stories for the game. So if you have any comments, questions, feedback, suggestions, feel free to post them in the discussion page or that we showed at the start. Um, and we'll try to make this tool as, to improve this tool as much as possible. Then just a couple of disclaimers. Currently, as of the time of this recording, we do not have an autosave feature or a warning when you close the program to tell you that you've unsaved changes. We're working on this as a matter of utmost importance, uh, but it will be a bit of time before we get to that. The second issue is that when you publish to Steam, our software currently doesn't allow you to edit your published um, mods, uh, so just be aware of that as well. Again, we're working on that to get it fixed as soon as possible. Now, when you create a story, you will go to File, New Story Pack. We'll give it a title. This is the title that people will see um, on the Steam, uh, Steamworks page, Steam Workshop page. Um, so in this case, we'll just call it Test Content Creator. The Steam file name uh, is a current requirement, but it won't show anywhere, so we're just going to call it Test. The description is what just to give uh, other users an indication of, of what your story is about. So in this case, we're not just going to say this is a test. This is a test. The tags will be used by other users to search for your mod. So just give some kind of indication or way for them to find it. So if you follow our methodology, you might want to say it's funny. Uh, you might want to say there's horror elements or if you have a favorite Lovecrafting story that you're basing this on you might say rats in the walls. With that done you can create. To illustrate how the system works we will be using one of our stories that is actually in the game. Um, if you wanted to follow along you can go to the resources. It's, uh, the ID number is L30013. Um, these ID numbers are just for us when we do production. There's no other reason for you to, to know what it's about. In the story, the player basically is at Madame Fufu's and they witness an arm wrestling competition which they want to take part in. They can either test their strength or go loco. 
Now, we'll go through all of these just now, but for each of these actions, there has to be a pass text and a fail text. Also, some of them can have outcomes if you want to, and we'll touch on that a bit later. Right, so start to start of the story, we'll go back to our content creator, we will add an event. For the moment, we'll call the event arm wrestling. The location, we're going to fix it to Madame Fufu's, so the player will only receive this event if they go to Madame Fufu's. And for the moment, we're going to say no tag required. We'll touch again on tags a bit later. We'll put in the intro text from here. I'll just copy all of this. Now notice the um, bracket NL. This is for new line. The player will only see one line at a time on screen. And this just makes it easier for the player to read. And we limit this to about 270 characters. That's about all that can fit inside our text boxes at the moment. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But all these kinds of uh, restrictions you can find inside the content creator document. So for each of these new lines, the player will only see one line at a time. Next, we have to add the actions. So we'll go back to our document. We'll put an action for test your strength. And currently there is a requirement of greater than four body. So we'll go to your body, we'll go to requirement, greater than four. This means that the player needs four or more in the body stat to be able to pass this event. Uh, the no reaches are required, so we'll leave that out. And then we'll copy and paste the pass text. To note within the past text, whenever you want to give the player a stat point, you need to write it in the following way. In this case here, the crowd goes berserk, so the player gains some influence. So you will say gain to indicate whether they gain or lose a stat. Next you want to indicate to the software what is gained or lost. You start with a bracket, then S for the stat or for stat, plus or minus, depending on whether you want to add or subtract a stat, then the value, i.e. how much you want to add or subtract, underscore, and then the first three letters of the stat that you want to subtract or add to. So in this case, this reads as the stat needs to be added, that the value is one, and it should be added to influence. Over here, that you can see that the player gains three riches. Once that's done, can add any outcomes we'll touch on that a bit later but for the moment we'll jump straight to the fail text so if you scroll down we'll write the fail text add that there again you can note here that a loses body s minus one underscore bod and again here lose body but in the end we give them some influence we tend to give players some stats even if they fail but not as much as when they pass. A general rule of thumb is I to never give more than one in total. So in this case, they've lost three bodies, so minus three, and then plus two influence. So that's a kind of negative one total amount of stats that we gain. For victories, we tend to go between roughly between two and three, uh, and we count riches um, as three riches is about one to two stats. Okay, to speed things up, I've repopulated the second action, which is Go Loco. Just notice that sanity and insanity are both flip sides of the same coin. So going, but the, the game only recognizes sanity as a stat uh, in, in the pro on the programming side. So if you wanted to give the player insanity, you have to go negative. So if you wanted to have the player gain insanity, you need to give them minus sanity. In this case, we wanted the player to have uh, more than four insanity, so it had to be less than minus four sanity to be able to pass. Right, so if that is all you want to do, just to write a single event, this is all you needed to do. You could go and add a new event if you wanted to. From here, you can add as many events as you want to your story pack. The second situation is where you would want a player to receive a follow-up event. 
So you wanted consequences for their actions, whether it be their choice or whether passing or failing. In the same story, in the same story, you wanted to create a follow-up event where if you tested your strength or went loco, either way, if you beat Seamus at the arm wrestling competition, we wanted him to come back and try and punish you for it. He is a vengeful guy after all. To do this, we give a tag to the player. The game will look at all the tags that player has on them, and then the following rounds will assign stories based on those tags. So to do this, you first need to create the tag. So if you see that the tags box here at the bottom, you can we always start with a custom tag. You can just rename that custom tag, and we'll call it Seamus. Now inside event action one, at the pass outcome you can add, we will, add, it will automatically add the tag Seamus. If you have more tags, you will get in the drop down, you'll get more tags here. So let's just do that quickly, we'll just add two of those. So in the drop down you can have any number of tags. And choose the type of tag, we also allow you to destroy locations uh, based on action. So if uh, you wanted someone who was in downtown and did some partic particularly criminal activity and you wanted to punish them for that, you could have the police lock down downtown, in which case you could use the destruction box over here. So back to the tag, you need to tell the game which tag to apply, in this case Seamus. You need to tell them who to apply it to, and in this case it will be the current player, but you can also do it to everyone or everyone except for the current player or randomly to choose one player. The priority is used when there are more than when there's more than one tag applied to the player. So for instance, he might have um, through his actions caused one tag to be applied to him and one of the other players might have through their actions caused another tag to be applied to him. The game will then just choose between the tags if there's a higher priority that will choose the game will choose that one first to appear. Or alternatively, if all the, the events have the same priority, it will randomly choose between them. In this case, best practice is to set priorities to medium. Now, to apply the tag, we need to create a new event. So in this case, we will go to the follow-up event for this, which would be L0016. In this follow-up event, copy the text. So basically create it as a standard event. We will call this event Seamus. It doesn't have to be the same as the tag, but in this case it just makes it easier. Location. You could decide on a specific location. Just keep in mind that the probability of the player going to a specific location the round after he's received a tag is very low so best practice is to set it to general but if you wanted it to be at a specific location you can do that as well. So in this case we'll leave it at general and the required tag is we want Seamus. Paste the text in here. Then you will just proceed the same way you did with a normal event. We'll take every action, every pass event, every fail event. Now you can add as much or as little to your story pack as you want and as many follow-up events as you want. Just keep in mind that um, unless you create an intro story, which you can do by selecting the round one story tag, which means that the story will appear, has a chance to appear in the first round of play. And unless you do that, you have no guarantee at what stage the player will see your event meaning someone might for the first time receive your event only in round six meaning that if you have any follow-up events they won't see those events during a certain playthrough if you wanted to guarantee that someone sees a whole series of events we'd recommend that the first point of entry to your event should probably be around one story and then you can create uh, up to five follow-up events uh, just remember that the, the game only lasts six rounds, so creating more than five follow-up events will not benefit you in, in any way. Once all of this is done, just keep in mind that you have to save continuously. So to do that, you will go to File, uh, Save As. I already saved this one once, so you can just call it Arm Wrestling. You save it there, place it. 
once you're ready to, once you've added all the events you wanted and you wanted to now test or publish your um, your mod you can go to Steam and then export for Steam just a quick note before we do that if you click on Steam and validate data it'll tell you if there are any inconsistencies in programming wise inside your story events it'll tell you what those issues are and it'll to, just to help you fix them so if we go for instance and we take out this action event or action name we go to validate data it'll tell you that there is no action name for event action 2 so we'll just add that again and if we go validate it'll do that there this also gets done automatically when you export for Steam so when you export for Steam uh, the file needs to be saved as test this is just so that the software can recognize it uh, during pub pub publication but it has no other effect with all that done you can either close or minimize your content creator and go to your steam folder where your game is located um, usually if you use the default settings it'll be under program files steam steam apps common and then for and tells us and this out here you would go to Fatahan data Fatahan mod test and over here you will copy your test.fatahan file and paste it now you can open up your game and you can go to the mods section just refresh over here you can see our, our um, mod it's called test content creator and there's a test, so it's both on name and description, and it should be show your Steam name. We can either now publish or test. It's recommended that you test it first, but if you don't want to, you can just go straight to publish. So we're just going to test this. So in the testing part, you'll see it's called test mode. By default, it'll do an intro test, so that is stories tagged as round one stories are the only stories which will appear so if i go here for instance to the church of sorry wisdom if i choose anything here it'll test mode it'll tell me no more intro events available for testing at this location because we didn't have any for that mod uh, if you uncheck it if you go back to another location you'll see that it also shows us no more events available for testing at this location because remember we created the, um, the mod to be only applicable to Madame Fufu's. So we go to Madame Fufu's, Campbell, you'll see the text starts to appear. It's recommended now that you go through it, check for any spelling errors if you haven't done so before, uh, make sure that your text matches up to the box and that if you have stats that the correct stats are displayed. Also when you reach your your actions, the correct actions are displayed and that you get the correct results. So in this case I should fail because you see I start with zero and all the stats. And I received the fail as intended. So if we end our turn, we can go back to the test options here at the side, we can reset the event and now we can give ourselves max and all the stats. That'll change your stats to have the maximum value we can go back gamble again we can receive the same event we can test our strength again and this time we should receive a pass so you can do this for all your um, events just test to make sure everything is there also note that you can if you have any events which destroy buildings you can just fix them again here just to see if that they work correctly once you're done with that, you can just go back to the main menu, go back to mods, and publish your game. So let's publish, it'll remove your test of attack and file. Now that you've published your mod, you can go look for your mod under more mods. Uh, I recommend you go to most recent, or you could search for test up here. It'll show your test content creator by design names. Just a quick note. It might take a couple of minutes before your mod reflects on Steam, so just be patient. Um, this one took about 10 minutes before it appeared the first time. To, to activate your mod, you can click on it and subscribe. 
with that done you can return back to your mods you can press the refresh button and now your mod appears and will be playable inside the game great so that's that's from us um, just note this is just supposed to be a quick guide uh, for more detailed description, you can just go through the content uh, creator PDF. It's got all the information you might need. And if you feel there's anything that's left out or any questions you have, feel free to post it in the, on the discussion page. And uh, we'll see if we can update the system or improve or assist you in any way possible. So from the Design Ems, we can't wait to see and play your games. So have a great time creating them. Thanks.